Hey guys, I'm back with you for two days in a row. Uh, today's the 25th day of the Lent Project, and it's Saturday, which is a day of rest. Um, and I'm hopeful that today is a time to refresh and take a minute to pause and remember that even if we're not working today, God is still at work around us. Um, and today specifically, we're going to focus more on the psalm than we are on the gospel reading and remember that God's love is at work everywhere around us. And our hope is that today that we'll kind of have our eyes open to where his love is at work in our lives today. Um, let's begin. We're going to begin with a little bit of silence, and we're just going to ask God to guide our time together. Here we go. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 8 and 9. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. This is from Psalm 136. Give, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. To him who struck down the firstborn of Egypt, his love endures forever. And brought Israel out from among them, his love endures forever. With a mighty hand and outstretched arm, his love endures forever. To him who divided the Red Sea asunder, his love endures forever and brought Israel through the midst of it. His love endures forever. But swept Pharaoh and his army into the Red Sea. His love endures forever. To him who led his people through the wilderness, his love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven. His love endures forever. And now a passage from John 8. The Jews answered him, Aren't we right in saying that you are a Samaritan and demon-possessed? I am not possessed by a demon, said Jesus, but I honor my Father, and you dishonor me. I am not seeking glory for myself, but there is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. Very truly I tell you, whoever obeys my word will never see death. At this they exclaimed, Now we know that you are a demon possessed. Abraham died, and so did the prophets. Yet you say that whoever obeys your word will never taste death? Are you greater than our father Abraham? He died, and so did the prophets. Who do you think you are? Jesus replied, If I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. My Father, whom you claim as your God, is the one who glorifies me. Though you do not know him, I know him. If I said I did not, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him and obey his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it. And was glad. You are not yet fifty years old, they said to him, and you have seen Abraham? Very truly I tell you, Jesus answered, before Abraham was, was born, I am. At this they picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus hid himself, slipping away from the temple grounds. This is a really, really cool passage, and it pairs up with the, the passage that we talked about yesterday. You can just sense the tension growing in this narrative as we continue to move towards Good Friday every day. It's like the tension is just ratcheting up a little bit at a time. When Jesus in verse 58 says, Very truly I tell you, before Abraham was born, I am. That must have sent shockwaves throughout that community because the phrase I am was very, very important to the Jewish people because he was basically claiming to be God himself. Which now, as believers in Jesus, we understand but at that time, that must have been an absolutely um, confusing, terrifying, bewildering statement all at the same time. And contrasting this with Psalm 136, where we're just saying over and over again the different ways that God has shown his love. It's interesting that God showed his love in one of the most difficult uh, testing and you know, one of the biggest times when Israel turned a corner, which was the Exodus leading out of Egypt. That was the, the moment in Israel's history where God stamped them as a people and said, I'm going to take care of you. 
no matter what. And yet in the middle of this story where Jesus is in the midst of incredible strife and tension, God is doing the same thing, whether people could recognize it or not. He's still guiding the process. His love still endured even in that moment. And Jesus, although he's redirecting people's hearts and minds and helping them see things that they couldn't understand, God's love is at the center of all of it. And it's about to break out, not only from Jerusalem, not only for the Jewish people, but for people like you and I all around the world. So two things. First of all, it's a good day to rejoice in that. And secondly, it's a good day to just look around our own lives and see where God's love is at work in the center of our lives, on the fringes of our lives. Where is God's love breaking in and where do we need to recognize it? Let's take a minute and think about that this morning. And now we'll pray together the song of creation. Glorify the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Praise Him and highly exalt Him forever. In the firmament of His power, glorify the Lord. Praise Him and highly exalt Him forever. Glorify the Lord, you angels and all powers of the Lord, O heavens and all waters above the heavens. Sun and moon and stars of the sky, glorify the Lord. Praise Him and highly exalt Him forever. Glorify the Lord, every shower of rain and fall of dew, all winds and fire and heat. Let us glorify the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise Him and highly exalt Him forever. In the firmament of His power, glorify the Lord. Praise Him and exalt Him forever. Almighty God, who after the creation of the world rested from all your works and sanctified a day of rest for all your creatures, grant that we, putting away all earthly anxieties, may be duly prepared for the service of your sanctuary, and that our rest here upon earth may be a preparation for the eternal rest promised to your people in heaven. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It's a great prayer for us to pray today, asking God to rest our minds and our hearts, preparing for the day when he'll provide eternal rest to all of his people in heaven. So let's take a minute and pray in silence and ask the Lord to give us rest today. And now we'll finish by praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen. Today's prayer, as we go throughout our day, and as hopefully we're resting and uh, finding a break to just reflect on what God's doing in our lives, is just the simple prayer from the Psalms. His love endures forever. Thanks for being with us. We'll be back here tomorrow. Somebody new will be leading us through a reading. And uh, thanks for joining us for the Lent Project.